We talked about cardinality before. Cardinality of a set is n if it is a natural number, which was what, 0, 1, 2, etc. Then s is called finite. And if not, we call s infinite. So the word infinite, when people have all these arguments, it means like forever or big or things like that. It means not finite. That's what it means. It's like it's not a natural number. We're talking about sets. Sets are one, two, three. Those are the things that exist, right? What's the number two? It's two ones, which is right after one. Add another one, I've got three. Add another one, I've got four. Do this forever, it's still the set of natural numbers, right? It's things that actually are, and I can hold them and see them. If that set isn't that, we call it infinite. Now, one of the things that we talked about cardinality It might be one thing to say that the cardinality of 1, 2, 3, and, which is equal to 3, and the cardinality of a, b, and c is also equal to 3. We could obviously say that if this was, say, the cardinality of a, the cardinality of b, we could actually easily say that a and b have the same cardinality. What would you do? Count the elements. What do you do? Count the elements. Is it the same number? Yes. Same cardinality. Pretty trivial. What if you don't want to do that? What if you walk into a room and it's a massive lecture hall of like a thousand chairs and you have a bunch of people that have come and you don't know how many chairs and you don't know how many people there are and you would like to compare the cardinalities, which is are there more chairs than people or more people than chairs or do they have the same number of chairs and the same number of people? You could count. Right? It'd be stupid. What would be a smarter way to do that? Tell them to sit down. Tell them to sit down. Sit down. <laughs> you watch everybody sit down. No empty chairs. Nobody is standing. What could you say? Cardinality. Same cardinality. Did you actually count them? No. But what did you do? You formed a bijection between the students and chairs. If everybody is sitting, and there are no empty chairs, and nobody's taking up two chairs, that's a bijection. <clears throat> so instead of counting, we can go ahead and say, hey, look, there's a bijection. If a bijection exists, that is a natural way of saying same cardinality without literally having to count. Whatever, is everybody OK with that idea? Million chairs, million students, sit down. <laughs> and we can say things like, oh, this cardinality is bigger than this cardinality, because I see you know, standing students, empty chairs. We could talk about sizes as well as if it is actually the same size. So that would be somewhat a better definition. So we will simply say that cardinality of A is equal to the cardinality of B if and only if there is a bijection. from A to B. You say sit down and look. Bijective, same size. On the other hand, if it's not onto, you can use that to talk about uh, comparison of one's bigger than the other. So one, if there is a one to one function, right, not onto. Right, which is what I'm saying. There's, if there's a one-to-one -one function, I at least see that everybody is sitting. We can say that the cardinality of A is less than or equal to the cardinality of B. If one to one and definitely not onto, which would mean that there are some B that it doesn't have, which is this is saying that they are not literally the same size, we say that A is strictly less than B, right? So we can do, again, back with my student analogy, sit down. If I see empty chairs, there's fewer students than chairs. But you can ask, well, how in the world do you know that? You didn't count students and chairs. I'm like, I don't have to. The function tells me. 
That's a one-to-one -one function, not onto. That's enough to say that they're, I know that they're definitely not equal, and one is smaller than the other without even knowing the number. Now, here's the fun part. Do all of these definitions still work if the set is not finite? If I have students who have a label, one, two, three, four, five, and that's their name, and it goes on forever, that is an infinite set, right? And then I have chairs labeled one, two, three, four, five, and it goes on forever, and that's an infinite set. And I say, sit down. And I look at it. I notice that everybody is sitting from now to infinity, and there are no empty chairs. So what could you say? You could say that they are the same size. There, you can have bijections between sets that don't stop. We've done that before, right? You could sit there and say, say for example, what if I had the set, oh boy, I don't know, say one, two, three, four, five, six, et cetera. But now I'm going to take the, um, this, zero, negative one, negative two, negative three, dot, 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 one, two, three, dot, 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 and I do the following. One is going to go to zero, two will go to one, four will go to two, six will go to three, three will go to negative one, five will go to negative two, seven is going to go to negative three. Now I'm going to put an ellipsis. What did I just do? Do you see the function? What's my function? One went to zero, and then all the evens go where? I'm putting them to the positive. First even number goes to one. Second even number goes to two. Third even number goes to three. What about the odds? They're going where? Negative numbers. Is this function with this ellipsis, do you see the pattern? Is this function one to one? Yes. Is this function on to? Is there ever a number on the right-hand side that does not have somebody mapped to it? No. So it's a bijection. So what does that tell you? They're both infinite, but they are same size. If a bijection exists, I'm going to say that they are the same size. So the numbers 1, <coughs> 2, etc., and that's actually what? Let's get a better name. So the cardinality of the positive integers is the same as the cardinality of the integers. <laughs> and you're like, what? Sure, I can pair them off. If there's a bijection between the two, I can pair them off. Now, <clears throat> the counting numbers are usually used to what? To count. Now, would you say you are still counting even though you, you haven't stopped? Like you say, count forever. That's still counting, right? If, if it's an infinite, how many people have played Duck, Duck, Goose? Run around, you tap people on the head, Duck, 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 Goose, and you've got to run around a circle, right? If you can go around and say, sit in that chair, sit in that chair, sit in that chair, sit in that chair, and everybody sits according to whatever rule you have, and you never have any, you are the function, you can say that there's a bijection between the two, as long as that such a thing exists. And if you always do it according to your number one, your number two, your number three, but you're never going to stop, what are you still doing? You're counting. And so what we're going to do is say this guy here, which is the counting numbers, one, two, three, defines the word countable. So what does it mean to be countable? It means that you can tap the entire set on the head, saying you're the special first place, you're second place, you're third place, and everybody gets their place. No one is missed. That gets its own name. The cardinality of the counting number is infinite. It's not finite, right? So I can't write n, so we're going to use something. And what we use is the, the Hebrew label letter aleph, and it's aleph null. And any number, so we have a definition, any set 
whose cardinality s is simply aleph null is called countable. Now, this is infinite. That means it doesn't have a finite number. So this is definitely the whole idea that how do you do this? You have to find a bijection, one-to-one -one correspondence, from the counting numbers to your set. This is what must happen. You have to call one, two, three, four, five, and no one is missed, and you all assign them a room. Everybody okay with that? All right. Let's have some fun with things that are countable. To be countable means we need to count them. All right. On the other hand, this is also there's also a definition for countability. So that's countability for that. That's part A. Uh. <coughs> and B or the cardinality of set is just simply n, which is a natural number, right? You actually counted it. So one countability, you count it, you get a number. Countable. The other type of countability, you count it and never stop. But it's still <coughs> countable. So if you count and get a number, it's countable. If you count and never stop, but everybody's used and you have a bijection, we also call it countable. We're using the counting numbers. 